identifier. And we were able to see why the thing was holding none because the return value of that uh, function or that method did not contain any, any identifier. It only did work of uh, changing. That is called a side effect. A side effect is a situation where your, 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 your function or member function, which we call method, did not return a value, but only caused something to happen. In this particular case, the something that was caused to happen is that the list is sorted. Uh, today, I want to do some things. I will, I will go back to that example, but before I do that, let me just enumerate, uh, let me just go through some general principles, especially as they relate to your exams, because it is good for us to discuss about exams now as we are getting closer and closer. Because what is most important to me is for you to understand the way, the, the, the philosophy behind the, the way we were examining this course. Uh, I told you that you should have uh, at least four homework assignments with you on your computer when you come to the final exam. I've already discussed that. And uh, I told you which particular ones that I was going to be interested in. So in addition to that, we're going to add the Venn diagram example that we discussed last week to the list of things you should come with to the exam board. And you will see why shortly. You'll see why. Uh, the goal of the exam is to allow you to demonstrate that you have sufficient knowledge of programming fundamentals that can form the basis of your continued learning. Uh, that you get even an A in a course, in a beginner's course on programming doesn't mean you are now good, but it just tells you, it just tells us that at least you have some fundamentals which you can build on. I, that's my goal, just to be able to be sure that you have those fundamentals that you can build on. Because you are young at a stage where Nigeria education system is in a flux. Uh, if we are not out of campus because of ASU strike, we are out of campus because of COVID, or for one reason or the other, maybe flooding or robbers, or so many things. And I think if your programming fundamentals are good and you have internet, you should be able to continue to learn. So this course I'm hoping would have given a lot of people sufficient fundamentals that they can now continue to learn by themselves. So the second thing is that you should use the knowledge in other courses. The reason, when I was an undergraduate many years back, we were having our computer uh, programming course at the end of the final year. And that was a very bad thing because your programming course is not supposed to even be in the university. You are supposed to have had these courses in secondary school. So that by the time you are entering university, you are using the computer to learn other subjects, to do better in other subjects. And then be, be young, you can play with things. But it's still, better than, it's still better than before. At least now you are learning it in your second year at 200 level. I'm hoping we'll get a situation where you can learn in your 100 level. And eventually we can put all these things in secondary school level so that you do not start learning to program when you are already a university student. You should be learning to program when you are in your early teens or even by the time you are 10. So that is the kind of way that we'll be able to be competitive with the rest of the world. The world is not waiting for us. And then lastly, I'm hoping that you will begin to gain valuable skills for employment or, or entrepreneurship for yourself. So that, those are the issues. So that is the reason why the exam is not about what did you remember or did you forget? No, the exam is about how much skills do you have? Do you have some basic skills? Can you do something? Can you navigate yourself through the programming environment of Python? Can, can I ask you to do specific things? And can, will you be able to get them done? Those are the things that are of interest, of importance. And the way the, this course will be examined will demonstrate that. So I want those of you who have made it to class today to understand the philosophy and the goal of the exam. The exam is not to know whether you have memorized some things. I don't care. But do you have some skills? If you have your program with you, can you make some things happen? Those are the things that are of interest. 
So let's go back. So the exam will be coding exams. So you should come prepared. And it is, uh, it is taken for granted that coding takes so much time that in a two hour exam, you will not have enough time to write a working program. I disagree. You will have enough time because you are not going to start from scratch. You are going to start from programs you already have been working with that you have submitted as assignment that you have practiced in class. And you are now going to answer some few questions that will demonstrate whether you even have sufficient knowledge and skills with the program that you claim that you have submitted for your test. So if you, if you simply copied somebody's program and submitted, this is your last chance not to kill yourself. Because if you, by the time you get to the exam, I will ask you questions that will change some of the programs. And if you didn't do the program yourself, you will not be able to make that program work in the, after the questions are asked you. And it will be necessary that your program will run because the, your exams will be back on the Python environment. So I will load your, I will load each person's uh, stuff in and I will go through the logic of what you have done and you will be given grades on the way you answer the questions, your creativity, the things you added and the ability for you to do this. It will happen. And how it happens is that you come to the exam with four or five prepared programs that are already run. Um, told you over and over. So if somebody comes to the exam without that with, on his computer, the person yeah, has already given himself his final grade. So it's not me that did that, it's you that did it to yourself. So better, this is a course of programming and there is no, if you want me to provide you uh, computers for your programming course, you can wait you know, until I get that there. So if you want to wait there, eventually I will get there. Maybe when you are 30, maybe when you are 50 years old, I would have got enough money to buy everyone a computer for myself. So you can wait if you want. So it is your practice time that will matter, not your memorization. So you will see that what you, I will do in the exam is going to depend on how much practice you have had. It is not how much memorization of uh, talk that you have. Okay, so this particular example I'm going to show now is something we have seen before, and I am testing your ability to use external library, which I started last week. There will be a question on external library usage. For instance, the Matplot library, the Plot library, all those ones are external libraries. So you need to understand how to bring them into scope with your code and how to address some of the library facilities that are there and use them in your working code. I've just given an example, and uh, that example will be enough. It will set, and if you can master using an example, then it is the same thing that you set out to do, to use other things. So I'm presenting you with a working code that we have seen before, doing Venn diagrams with list sets and other collections. In the example, we split lists into strings, split lists of strings into lists of smaller tokens. We looked at the difference between in place sorting and other kinds of sorting. What if you have in place sorting and you still want to assign the sorted list while retaining the original? But for instance, we know that the string class, the string type provides for in place, oh sorry, the list class provides for in place uh, sorting. But suppose that's not what you want. How can you compel your code to do out of place sorting? That is, you do the sorting and you create a new sorted list while you see how the unsorted old list. Can that happen? How do you go about doing this? I want to check whether some of you already have an idea of how to do this. You remember we discussed last time while the why we cannot just assign the result of a sort to another identifier because the sorting was done in place, changing the original uh, list to a new list without changing its name. Suppose you want to change its name. I want us to go to the chat room. I want to see whether there are people who already know what to do before I teach you, before I teach the rest of the class how to do it. So uh, the, I hope you get the question. The question is that you have a list that, and you want to sort the list, but you want to retain the original list and have another list. So the, at the end of your code, you want to have two lists, an unsorted list and a sorted list. Can you explain to me how you give, how you do that in uh, in your working program? This is the kind of question I can ask you in an exam. I'm not going to ask you to explain it to me. I will tell you to do it. So, and I will be waiting for you, uh, whether two or three lines of code, 
that it will require whether you can add that to your code and you get your grade, you get your marks for doing that. And you cannot do that and you waste your time, you get nothing for that. That is it. So I will go take you through how to answer that kind of question. But before I do that, I want to know whether there are people who already have thought about that or who are thinking about that and can see what to do before we will go to the debug section and actually attempt to do it. Okay, but as we keep, but this is not going to work because you've already done the sorting before you did a copy. Who do you know that list is a keyword? Okay, as a wiki, have you tried this? Okay, let us try, let us use as a wiki's code. Okay, let us use as a wiki's code and see how it will work. Okay, I am going to go, to, I'm going to take as a wiki's code through the debug, through the debug system and see how it will work. So you don't trust anybody, don't trust anything, just check it out. So, we, I will just I just injected into this program and let us see what happens. Uh, start with the debugging. Start debugging. Yeah. Okay, by the time we run line seven, you can see that L is one, four, six, three. Okay. Okay, that is, that is, uh, that is one way. Now, so we don't need to do, we don't need to worry about printing because if you go through the left hand side you can see that l is one four six three and m is one three four six so it's sorted okay but suppose i still want you to stay with the split and we are staying with split in the uh because see what you have done now is that you have used the global function suppose i want you to still i want to still limit you to the methods of the class how will you do it so as we can your you are correct, you have run it and it's working. So let us see what other. Okay, let, let, I can see somebody here. I mean, Baki, one piece, and so on. The listing, I mean, copy. Okay, that is still a relisting sort. So let us try and uh, look at Abbasit Olajuwon's example. Yeah, and just uh, stop debugging and straight through debugging again. Okay, so start debugging. Okay, so what am I doing here? Okay, so. Okay, so you can see that I mean, is having that. So let us see what relisting is. Okay, it has uh, arranged it, has it? P, O, I think eleven P, I think eleven. Okay. Okay, okay, so that also works. And this time we have used the member function. So that's that's good. Let's see what others have said. Okay, so so Abdu, Abdu Basit, you can see, let me just see what others have said, okay. Uh, now, I want, to, the, the, I want to change the question now. Now do it to a split sentence. Do the same thing now to a split sentence. That is, you have a split sentence, you split it by creating the 
you split it by creating the list and then you retain the original list and you have a sorted list. So that let me, I want to see that happen. I hope you got my question. You didn't get the question. The question is that the list is generated by splitting. Can you see that we generate lists by splitting? Can you see that? Okay, look at line 10 here. We generated a list by splitting a sentence. Instead of just a list that you created yourself, you generate a list by splitting a sentence. You, you retain that list and then you sort the, the, the list again. Now you have two lists. One, the list that is unsorted. The second thing is the list that is sorted. I hope you've got the question now. No, I want it to be a sentence. I don't want it to be a splitting of a list. I want you to type a sentence. See that example of a sentence. KK, why are you doing this? Uh -huh. Type a sentence, a regular sentence. Uh -huh. So that's what I want to see. Still waiting for somebody to do that. It's not, it's not harder than what you have done. And when you do it, we will. Okay, so let's see who is the person doing this. This is the same as Ubike. Okay. Okay, so let us run this again. Uh, I will stop debugging. Start debugging again. Stop, stop the debugging, start again. And uh, without uh, doing so much harm to the program. Okay, so your, okay, there's an error. There's an error. Let me see whether there is another, let us leave that there. We are going to check why that error exists, where that error exists. Mm -hmm. Ghost time, Ojo. Well, we, I will leave this, but let us, I want to ask, why is this, why do we have this error? Let's see how many people follow to this point and be able to tell me why there's an error here. That's not the reason, there's a different reason why that is happening. Because the, the yes, you are, he's trying to treat, where, where I split, is something coming? Okay, yes, you are right. Hugo. It's using copy, which is which will work with a list, and it's using it with a string. When you like now, it's working here because I've already created a list. M is a list, so you can do the M copy. So those are the kinds of funny, funny things that you would not know if you not be unless you have been practicing it. So it is not the it is it, it is not where the issue we are discussing here today is not the the strong this waste the way it sorts is case sensitive that's not the problem the problem is that you see that copy was not a member function of the string class so that was why you got that error to start with okay so as UBK has corrected himself now using the example I've given okay my name is Eddie Split uh, L now creates it. L is now a list, so it can take the copy thing, and A is also a list, it can be sorted. So you can see that you can see the number of errors, you can the number of mistakes you can make if you do not have practice and experience with this thing. If you are just coming to the class, grabbing some things, these the things are not hard, but you need to gain some experience in using them. So let me see whether there are other contributions in the chat before I now make my conclusions and tell you what to do in preparing for your exam. So you can, what, what I can see here now is that you should be able to see that it is possible for you to be given questions that are actually going to test whether you can program in the very short space of time that is in the exam, provided you come prepared with a working code. All I did is to just copy, you answer me on the chat and I just, I'll be able to pick your code Put it in the working code and run, it, and I was able to run it. So you can be, you should be able to do that even in an exam, in an exam condition, uh, in a very short time. So, so, so I can ask you to do things in an exam that will still end up in working code. Please remember that the uh, exam must, you must submit a code that is running. If you, as long as you are having bugs, you must debug your program and make sure what you are submitting at the pens up is something that is actually working. Because if it's not working, 
you are going to be heavily penalized for that. So let's go back to the, to the slides now. Okay, so there will be a question on external library usage. As I said, I'm only interested in grading working code. I'm presenting you with a working code that we have seen before doing Venn diagrams with list sets and other collections. So you can see we did it with, we used the, uh, the, our Venn diagram they even start from something that was a, was, was a string that has been split. So whichever way it goes, we can do several of these things. And then you create a list by just saying split. And then you can make that into a set before you use it, before you use the Venn diagram, because the Venn diagram expects sets. You can create a set from the, the list using the set constructor. Uh, in the example, we split the list of strings into list of smaller tokens. We looked at the difference between in-place sorting and other types of sorting. What if you have in-place sorting and you still want to assign the sorted list while retaining the original? How do you go about doing this? We look again at the example and I want suggestion on how this can be done. You've already, we've already gone past that. What am I doing here? I'm giving you an example First of all, I'm telling you, bring your Venn diagram example to the exam. You can improve on your own. It doesn't have, in fact, the fact that you bring your own working code, which is not exactly the same thing as my own, you are going to get rewarded for that because that shows that you are doing some work, that you are thinking. But when, once you are thinking, you are going to think differently from me. And I want to see that thought, uh, that thought or that thoughtfulness on your part. Now, I have showed you now that it is possible for me to ask you a question that you can get done in five, 10 minutes. So if I have I, if I have four or five pieces of code, I can ask you 10 questions and that all those questions will be, uh, will be uh, doable very well within an hour or two of your exam time. So that is what we are going to do. Um, I'm going to base my questions on code that you bring to the example. And I will ask you questions that you don't know anything about. So it is only in the example that you are now going to be getting the kind of questions that I'm asking. You might write some answers on your exam booklet, and you might just, some of the answers will just be something due to the submitted code. So that is what I am telling you will happen in the exam. This is all I want to read. Let me see whether I have, okay. So add the Venn diagram example. So add this to the list of examples to bring to the final exams. This is an example of the questions we may be asked. So what we have just done now gives you a clarity of the kind of questions that can be asked. This is way you can ask me ask the question. And if you have more, if you have uh, things that you don't understand, you want to ask me, you can go ahead. Note that you will be greatly penalized if your code is not running due to the errors of syntax or logic. How do you avoid this? Make sure that the code you bring to the exam wall are tested and tried that they are working. So as you are making any modification, the code is still working and you can make it work within the time allotted. Practice to ensure you can present working code. So, so, so other questions will come from the other examples that you are that we have we have discussed. So that is how uh, I'm just explaining to you. That's how things would be done. And uh, apart from this. I don't really have more to discuss into this class. And uh, I think uh, I will give five minutes for questions, which you can post in the chat on the chat side. And then after that, I will end to this class and um, we will, I will go through your uh, submitted assignments. And those submitted assignments are going to take the place of uh, midterm exam. So the assignments are going to take the place. So we will see you in the finals. Again, I remember, charge your computer that it can withstand the one to two hours of exam. Make sure that you have codes that we have discussed as assignment, all the assignments you have done, and this last one, this Venegu, this simple code fragment. And it is on the basis of that, that your questions in the final exam will be based. Any questions from the class? Um, let's see if there are questions to take that. If there are no questions, at the, in five minutes, the admin uh, can close the... Yes, uh, Matt, what's the question? 
I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for Rahimat. Rahimat, ask your question. <laughs> Those are the list of codes. They are here. The assignments, the assignments uh, is your expansion of the student class. Then uh, you, the same student class that we have inheritance, the timer class, procedural codes of this. And now we are talking about the, 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 the event class, the event. Yes, this is the last class, unless there is a reason to, to schedule another class. Rahimat, have you gone through, have you gone through the videos and the things that others, that others did before you came? You have. Uh, so, so if you have questions on those, you can post them. Or if you have, the, those of you who are uh, direct entry students, tell me if there is any of the previous lectures who want me to, to, to go through again with you, then I will do that. Or the, just for your sake, I'll do that. So send, send, I've already given you all that thought before you came. So if there's any particular one that you want us to go through, we will go through. But I thought this, this, this the audio and videos are there that we would do that. But let me know what you want. Because the reason why I didn't go over it again is because you have my video. So I don't see how you, what I will say differently. But if, you, if there's something you think I should, I, I can do to help you, Explain to me and I will do it. All my lectures are recorded. So you have all of them. So what you, you have gotten everything that the people that came before you got. So what is the question? So what is left for you is not hearing more lectures. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's not hearing more lectures, it's your practice. Okay, so. Uh, admin, you can shut down the class. And if there are, if there are, if there is anything, send send to your class rep to me, and I can still give you an extra class if you want. 